Hello guys, I'm JC4, and there's a thing on my TV. Eh, there we go, got rid of it. I said two on it. It's letting me know that number two... Not sure what number two... Well, honestly, I do kind of know what number two means. It's talking about the channel. I had to get rid of it. Anyway, we're back with Banjo 2 e and... Um... I was gonna say that I'm JC4, but I already said that, so... There's no need to repeat myself. I put my phone on silent. Well, vibrate. I'm pretty sure you heard that. And in this part, we're gonna go unlock the next world. We got nine jiggies, and we only need four. But the good news is, we're so super awesome that we have nine jiggies that we can actually unlock the next two worlds. Now, the thought just hit me a moment ago that possibly I could end up fast-forwarding these sequences just because, well, in all honesty, it's kind of time-consuming. Like, if I were to make a guesstimate on how long this takes, come on, can we put it somewhere? There's like two spots, and you refuse to do anything. I'd say that this would probably take about maybe three, four minutes, which, you know, that's not really necessary for unlocking a world now, is it? If I sped it up, it'd take like maybe a minute, too. The only disadvantage is if I sped it, well, what the hell, it says, like, <laughs> that said 20 seconds, okay, never mind, I'm being drastic. Well, no. Yeah, I'm being stupid, forget what I was saying. I was thinking about speeding these up, but... You know, I get a minute and a half to actually put together the puzzle. Plus, the majority of it is these stupid cutscenes. That I'm supposed to be editing out. This is a new area. We haven't seen this yet. We must go here. We must investigate further into the Isle of Hags. I like how the gate lit up when it got blasted, and that just blew everywhere and probably killed something. Lovely. I can't even, like, do the right head tap <laughs> because he's talking. I really wish he'd stop. Please stop. Thank you. Alright, we can unlock the next world as well. Now, cool thing is, this world right here that I'm working on is my favorite. The one I'm about to deal with <laughs> during this when we're playing and shit is actually my least favorite in the game. But you know what? I'll get through it because the sooner I get it done, the sooner I don't have to deal with it. That's over there, stupid head. The sooner I don't have to deal with it. So yeah, always gotta look at the po positive side of things. I was saying positive and bright at like the same time and it sounded stupid. There we go, that took no time at all. Yeah, it's a great one, will show me the way. That's another area. But you know what? We'll find this we're gonna investigate everything. It's just like Grunny's Lair. Remember when we went through Grunny's Lair? And I was like, hey man, I don't even know where the hell that is. When we figured it out, we're about to figure it out more. Because I'm being stupid and this is terrible commentary. I had macaroni and cheese earlier. Did you know that? Now you do. Also, I have like people coming over at about 3 and it's like 2? No, it's not. It's like 1.30. So, this shouldn't take too long. So I should be able to nerd things up on here for a while before they show up. We can't do anything else. Can't unlock any more worlds, so fuck that. Let's just go on and play some worlds because dialogue is done forever. Get out of the way. And by forever, I mean for an elongated period of time. One thing that I actually kind of miss... That was genius. I had a feeling that wasn't going to work. It over Banjo-Kazooie, over this game, is that remember when you would walk around in Gruntilda's lair and Gruntilda would just like talk and shit randomly and just like mock you? I like that. You don't get that in this game, which is kind of saddening. I think it would have been cool if they did, but, you know, that was more or less like, oh, hey, I'm Gruntilda the Witch. I just kidnapped your little sister and holding her hostage, and I'm here to mock you because you think you can do something, rather than this is, oh, hey, I'm here to get my revenge. So I guess the story-wise, you can see some differences and whatnot. But, I mean, if I was going to tell it, I'd be a dick and be like, Hey, look, where's Bottles? He's dead. So will you. Now's the time for you to learn shooting eggs that crackle and burn. A brand new egg net you've acquired, and now I'll tell you how they're fired. Tap R to get your eggs on view. Tap it until it's right for you. 
So now we've got more than one style of egg. And well, you're going to be getting quite a bit of this. And that's what I meant earlier when I said the blue eggs have lost their value. I don't know why I did that, but I just did. I actually meant to go over here. But yeah, the blue eggs kind of lost their value because they've been replaced by all these other eggs that are like way better. But, you know, you're going to have to deal. Alright, good, I got it. Oh, <laughs> look, you see another egg. Go for it. Let's go investigate that area. Because I can. And I'm Banjovi. Hey look, another silo. You know what? No, don't don't deal with the silo. Leave the silo alone. The silo has feelings. Jamajard, however, does not. So let's annoy him. And I like how we almost went back in the bag. For blasting things, these eggs were made. Don't stand close when you fire a grenade. Grenade eggs are probably going to be the most useful eggs in the entire... Ooh. That looked like it hurt. Grenade eggs are going to be like the most useful in the entire game, so... Also, if you notice like how the um, eggs bounce around and stuff, and they're on collections and they change and whatnot, that's kind of the reason they didn't have just standalone eggs and stuff like they did in the first game. Because, you know, that was just like, oh, pick up one blue egg at a time. They couldn't do that, so... Especially with the huge variety of eggs, so they just did this whole cluster, and you know what? I think it works. No! At least I could skip it. So that's our reasoning behind that. Turn that way. Jump that way. Is this even... Alright, well, that's cool. That wasn't necessary, but I did it anyway. Let's go this way. We got speed shoes. <laughs> we got the speed shoes running up that hill. One the cool thing is, in this game, you can run across water. I don't believe you could do that in the first one, but I like how they threw it in. Can I take him off? Thank you. Because I want to go up here real quick. Because there's jam jars. These makes breaking so much fun now. Listen to how it's done. Leap up high in the air and then hold Z. Watch Kazooie and spin and drill with her head. What? Oh, Zed and watch her drill with her head. Okay. That works. That kind of confused me for a second. Um, where do I need to go? I need to go over here. The one thing um, I'm going to have to be doing with a lot of these worlds is basically just starting off by unlocking everything. Because that's kind of... Thank you. A bummer about this game is you can't really do much until you've like unlocked just about everything. So that's going to be how I'm spending this first go-around until we can actually collect some Jigama ease. Because they made this one a lot harder. They're like, oh no, this isn't going to be simple Jiggies. No, no. Get on the pad, thank you, go to the world entrance. Um... Oh! Crap! <laughs> My sensor bar fell and it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Whatever. I'll be okay! We haven't gone inside this place yet. We saw it in the Mayhem Temple, but we kind of avoided it. So... This introduces a new character. Humble Wumba. So, what Humbo Wumba serves in this game is she's basically nothing more than Mumbo in the last game. Except, in this game, you know, you get to see Mumbo and Humba in each and every world. So, this time you get transformations. Personally, I don't like this transformation. I think it's crap. But hey, what are you going to do, right? No, leave me alone. And all you got to do to change back is jump back in the pool. So, yeah, just like Mumbo, since the dialogues or whatever is repetitive and unavoidable, I'll probably cut that out in the future too, but I figured for the first time we could show it. Now the detonator, that also helps you unlock things just like Mumbo does, but I think we're going to take care of this detonator first. You know, get the painful stuff out of the way. Really, I am going to be taking care of some of the painful stuff. I'm going to do like my least favorite Jiggy in the whole world first. Interesting fact though is that this level, along with the other one I just unlocked, 
were both actually meant to be inside of um, Banjo Kazooie. They were both scrapped because of space limitations, but they wanted to include a lot more in it, so I think that's kind of cool. Ah, get that. First, I think it would have been interesting to see what this one would have looked like inside of Banjo Kazooie. Because, I mean, for starters, you're not going to have all these egg things. You're going to actually have. Okay, I was beginning to wonder. You can have music notes literally all over the place, and it's not going to be as planned out. It'll be a lot easier. So I almost wonder how much the mines could have really changed. Personally, I don't really miss the fact that it wasn't in Kazooie, but... I guess it was one they just decided to use anyway. They're like, hey, we didn't use this. Let's use it now. Also, because I haven't talked about much beta stuff or whatever... And I like to, because I'm a nerd about it. Unfortunately, there's like not a super lot regarding beta and whatever. I've noticed for like sequels of games, there's tend to not be as much because you know, the first time you make a game, you know, you don't know what the hell you're doing. The second time, though, it's all way more figured out. So like with this, you know, they got everything straight they wanted to in Kazooie. Also with Majura, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of changes there too, but. Ocarina of Time had some pretty huge changes, so... No, this way. I find it weird, though. But there was one mode inside... There was one really specific thing in this game that's kind of, like, well-known. That, uh, was meant to be inside of it, but kind of... Thank you. Not completed. It was called Devil Bottles. Or Bottles Revenge. What it was was it was a hidden two-player mode where the second player would get to control Devil Bottles, and what Devil D Bottles would do was he'd um, take over bad guys and control bad guys so he could annoy you and stuff on your quest. I think that's an interesting and also an asshole idea to do. Mainly because uh, I don't think I'd be very fond of my brother whipping me around with some of these enemies. Unless he could use the enemies to kill another enemies, then it could be like a... You know, NO! It's not what I want to do! Yeah, if you could control other enemies and have them kill each other, then I guess I'd make it a little more co-op-ish for my tastes. No, leave me alone. 